inviting me um, here today. Uh, I have to say it's been a really fun whole week. Actually, look at whole genome sequences, you would start to see 
more detail about the, the spread and relatedness of the, what, of the sequences. So basically, um, in that context, uh, we've had a growing appreciation for the benefit of whole genome sequence um, analysis. And uh, we've um, uh, been really privileged to basically um, lead in Canada a lot of um, global um, um, analyses of outbreaks using whole genome sequences. In 2003, um, the Genome Sciences Center here uh, was the first to sequence the SARS genome. Uh, we had a listeriosis outbreak in Canada involving um, um, maple leaf foods that was basically uh, the first um, uh, foodborne illness that was really tracked and, and its variability typed with the uh, uh, whole genome sequences. Um, in 2010, uh, it was Canada's National Microbiology Lab that led the um, uh, genome sequencing of the Haiti cholera outbreak that occurred after um, the large earthquake that occurred in 2010 in Haiti. That it was a really sad story actually because they basically um, had this earthquake and there was this cholera outbreak that actually what the um, Canadian um, uh, labs were able to show was that uh, uh, through the genome sequencing was that this was actually um, that foreign aid coming in had brought the cholera in and that this is how that cholera outbreak started. And in fact, now we're at 7,900 deaths to date um, uh, for an outbreak where they used to have no cholera. Now they have this um, ongoing outbreak of cholera that's still going on today. Uh, yeah, but what's key is to realize the, the real benefits of doing this. It allows you to track at a very, um, basically the highest resolution possible um, infectious disease outbreaks. And um, I was very privileged to be involved with the BC Center for Disease Control in doing a TB outbreak where we were the first to integrate social network data with whole genome sequencing and, uh, and resulted in us identifying that um, this outbreak that appeared to just be one um, clonal outbreak was actually multiple outbreaks occurring um, with super spreaders and we were able to identify sort of transmission patterns and find risk factors and found this new risk factor of crack cocaine usage that was actually precipitating that outbreak that wasn't appreciated before. So uh, in this context, the um, government of Canada has really appreciated the benefit of whole genome sequencing in, when we have outbreaks to help us um, <coughs> track um, and identify origins and, and, uh, and uh, spread of, of these infectious diseases. So uh, they started a um, genomics research development initiative called GRDI that is a pretty impressive um, cross-departmental um, collection of um, <coughs> projects that are basically aiming to strengthen food and water safety in Canada through uh, federal genomics initiative. And uh, in, in this context, um, we uh, started to look at what was being done and what needed to be done to get to the point of being able to do real-time infectious disease outbreak investigation. And in short, what we um, have been funded now to do is uh, to sort of fill in these key bioinformatic gaps in the GRDI, developing this, what we call IREDA, or Integrated Rapid Infectious Disease Analysis Platform to support uh, real-time infectious disease outbreak investigation. Uh, this is uh, uh, key, absolutely critical, because up till now, um, we have been doing genome sequencing, but it's not in real time. It's not right as the outbreak is occurring. It's just starting to happen now. You're, we're starting to get reports of this, but it's not in a routine basis. It still involves <coughs> fairly cumbersome methods with a lot of uh, bioinformatics support. And what we want to do is develop a, a pipeline that will allow us to um, have both public health workers and researchers be able to, in a more user-friendly way, and rapidly investigate um, um, infectious disease outbreaks in the genome level. <coughs> to do this, I want to emphasize the use of the word hour here. Um, actually, I have a triumvirate. Uh, apologies, I made this late at night last night, but this is my attempt to show the first triumvirate of the um, uh, pathogen uh, bioinformatics um, uh, researchers that we're doing. Uh, we're all co-PIs on this project. Um, myself representing the academics, Will Sao representing the BC provincial labs, and essentially representing the, BC, uh, the provincial um, perspective, <coughs> excuse me, and then um, and then Gary Van Donkler, who's representing the, who heads um, bioinformatics at the National Microbiology Laboratory at the Public Health Agency of Canada, 
And uh, thank you. Um, it, I have to say that we're very um, uh, gratified to have great support from a, a number of researchers. I'm just going to quickly do this sort of almost like an acknowledgement slide just to say that we have some great participants involving um, uh, uh, provincial, uh, national, and, and international uh, participants. The point I'm trying to make is that we're sort of getting this buy-in to continuing to provide leadership and actually developing this resource in Canada. And then uh, what is key is that we're, we're pulling together a group of people. I just had to list all these other people, even though I don't have time to do acknowledgements, I know, but uh, there's some great team of people we're starting to develop already. But, uh, but that we're um, basically um, uh, doing this key filling in these gaps uh, in this um, GRDI initiative that will allow us to hopefully come up with a platform within uh, three years uh, that can be used uh, internationally. So the um, uh, key gaps that we have to deal with are, uh, and I'm really not going to go into, don't have time to go into the same details, so just really quickly, uh, we, want, we really need more rigorous genomic epidemiology, ontology, and data standards, and particular um, data standards and, and ontologies that will link the epidemiology with the genomic um, data. Uh, this is, um, uh, we've built, we can build upon this and then develop obviously the database. Uh, we've got this core infrastructure, it's already been developed, but we need to implement a, um, uh, you know, a sophisticated user act, as to access controlled um, uh, interface, um, uh, API or uh, programming interface to support um, access to the database. And then we need to, we have a few key tools that are sort of missing in the infrastructure that we need to basically um, do analyses, coupled with, I think this is really important, that we have these um, researchers in, particularly in microbiology and public health workers who are um, interested in this data but don't have the knowledge in some cases to deal with them at genomic analyses. And we want to do some um, training workshops and courses to help facilitate that. And we can definitely do that for the public health workers in very um, uh, closed environments. But uh, uh, the IRENA platform, uh, you don't have to, I won't go through this at all in detail, but just to make a point um, for those who are more informatics oriented, we're using um, uh, RDF um, triple stores, I'll just mention a bunch of words here, a federated approach with um, user access control and a RESTful API. And the, the point is that we're using this federated approach. You could do a centralized approach and everything goes to one centralized location. Problem is there's a lot of politics, a lot of countries will not want all the information going to one centralized location. A federated approach allows you to have sort of a distributed um, system, but yet you have some control over how that system is put together. And in short, um, through this uh, kind of balanced approach between distributed and um, and uh, centralized and balanced in terms of um, degree of flexibility and access. Um, uh, hopefully, we, we aim to basically make a, a resource that can be dynamic and can, can handle different privacy concerns, um, data formats, etc. Organizations, most importantly, can share data without giving up control of their own data. Um, these are kinds of issues that I, I, I think are going to become increasingly important with a, a number of different medical applications for um, bioinformatics data. So, uh, so basically, we're also providing a suite of tools for a range of researchers, public health workers, and just to briefly mention, for example, one thing is we have this island viewer tool for viewing um, genomic islands that we can sort of look at pathogen-associated genes or antibiotic resistant genes and quickly get a snapshot of a genome um, when it sequences to see what um, interesting new regions there are or any changes in terms of um, virulence genes present, et cetera. Um, what we want to do is actually sort of integrate that a bit with the GView, another tool that allows you to sort of zoom in and zoom out and have sort of more flexibility. And so we're, we're sort of building on some existing tools to sort of develop a platform that will allow us to use um, and browse these uh, genomes more uh, flexibly and hopefully intuitively. So uh, in closing, um, uh, for this sort of three-year period, the plan is to develop an IRETA bioinformatics platform. Um, we're going to build on existing infrastructure, so we think it's very uh, doable, addressing these key gaps. The goal is really to do um, real-time outbreak investigations with integrated genome data. Um, you know, as shown here in this graph, uh, the, the, it, this really has the potential um, to save lives and economies by literally preventing um, cases 
um, from spiraling out of control and preventing the uh, international spread. Um, <clears throat> I just had to stick in this little picture of my daughter with her bluey plush microbe that she dressed up at Christmas. Excuse me. <clears throat> this was her Christmas blue. Um, just to say that I really hope that for um, uh, we can do such a great job with uh, tracking infection. I'm not so naive to say we can't track, we're going to be successful in stopping every infectious disease outbreak. Of course, um, uh, there's going to be some doozies, I'm sure, that are coming down the, uh, around the corner. But uh, I'm, I'm really hopeful that with platforms like this, we can actually um, track and, um, and halt and control infectious disease outbreaks more quickly. And my daughter will think of blue as this nice, cuddly, cute flesh microbe and not something so uh, with that, I just want to acknowledge um, the Genome Canada and GRD funding. And